Hey, what's up? It's Josh Neff here. You're watching Comic Book Shopping. We're here at Meltdown. I'm standing with a legendary Frank Miller. That's right. You know him. If you don't, you're crazy. Frank, it's an honor to have you on the show. Good to be here, sir. I've really got a Western I want to do. It's a Sin City. Wow, I didn't know about this. You're a good salesman. Let's talk about comics. Okay, let's go. This man has done so many incredible comics, I can't even begin to list them, but guess what? I'm going to. He's got Daredevil, he's got The Dark Knight Returns, he's got Batman, Year One, you've got Martha Washington, you've got Sin City. Let me just start off, what genre haven't you tackled yet? Westerns. I've really got a Western I want to do. It's a Sin City. Ooh, a Sin City Western, man. I figure all the, all the superhero books get an origin um, story, why shouldn't Sin City? I can see it now, man. It's Sergio Leone, Frank Miller flavor, man. It's, I'm thinking about okay, it. Thinking okay, about don't it. rush. All right, I'm, I'm already rushing him, sorry. Yeah. It takes time, people have to have some patience. Yeah. Your career spans so many amazing things. You actually pretty much launched the regenesis of comic books in the 80s. Let's talk about Ronin. Well, How yeah, get... Ronin, I got hit by two really big influences at the same time. I was exposed to Lone Wolf and Cub. And at the same time, um, I was exposed to Jean Chirot, Mobius. At that age, at that time, hit by all this material, I just threw everything into a giant stew pot and made a completely insane comic book to combine them. If you have not checked out Ronin, I highly recommend getting the omnibus that exists. It's fantastic. Let's move on to The Dark Knight Returns. Sure. How did that come about? I had a chance to do Batman, and I was 29 years old and dreading the nightmare of turning 30. And so I figured Batman's got to be older than me. So I made him in the impossible age of 50. From that sprung everything about the story. That gave me the opportunity to put him in a really dystopian world that really justified there being a rough and tumble Batman. And casting Superman in a very questionable role as government stooge. I originally planned it on being a very simple, straightforward story in which Batman came out of retirement, fought the bad guys, and died in a hail of police gunfire. But as I was working on it, I realized that didn't really work. And also, the other characters started crawling in. It became a story about Batman and Superman. And this little girl became Robin, and the, the whole thing just got bigger and bigger. Well, it's truly one of the greatest comic okay. books ever written. I mean, I got chills when I, from a kid reading it to my adult age now, reading it again, I always get chills oh, on certain you. pages. Every single writer who's ever read The Dark Knight, it's burned into them. And then their take on Batman is forever <laughs> partly yours. Well, that's the way it was for me with Dick Sprang's Batman and with Neil Adams. It's, it's part of the process of handling these old characters is that you go in and you do your best work and you hope you've, 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 you've not just had your fun with the toys, but you've actually done something to be able to remember. Now here's something that just recently came out. This is the collection of Dark Knight 3. I read it and actually, I gotta be honest with you, the ninth issue, I got a tear in my eye at that last wow. page when it went full circle. We were counting on two tears. Oh man, well it was a, it might have been we're, three. You really let us down. It might have yeah. been three, Frank. What inspired you to come up with a storyline of Dark Knight 3? These characters are a well that you can keep going back to. It's, it's like I, when I finished the first Dark Knight, I thought, that's it, I'm done. There's no coming back. And, you know, that sort of thinking is always wrong. What inspired you to, like, break away from the big guys and start making your own comics? Well, that started really with Sin City. If I'm going to do something original, why not with a young, vigorous company? And the relationship with, with Dark Horse has turned out to be very, very strong, unwaveringly strong. Well, the Sin City uh, movies are, are really amazing. That's because yeah. you were behind it. Sin City... Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. It was sure, it was, it was, it was great that I was involved, but it was, it was also absolutely important that it had the vision and energy of Robert Rodriguez behind it. And then also that he had a big enough and healthy enough ego to say that he wanted me shoulder to shoulder with him through the whole thing. And uh, he was as generous uh, a collaborator as you could ask for. Good man. 
What are your feelings about some of the adaptations, specifically about people taking some of your work, like the Daredevil Netflix series? Mm. Did you get a chance to check it out yet? I haven't really seen it. Since I heard Elektra was in it, I kind of ran for cover. You're the guy who originated and created Elektra? Yeah. So all these other interpretations, other people have done the character in mm -hmm. comic books. Mm -hmm. Now there's a TV version, there's been a movie version of Elektra. Mm -hmm. But there's always, you go back to the well, sure. you go back to the original sure. source material. I can't be too territorial. I came in and, and I was playing I was playing with their toys and, and, and all that's fair game. What have you got coming up that you would like to talk about? Um, I, I, I've got lots of things in the pot. I, I've, I've got more historical work in mind, a whole lot more. Well, we love 300, well, I'll say that you. for sure. Hey, there's, more, there's more along those lines. It's a fantastic yeah. graphic novel. Yeah. If you, have, if you are only familiar with the movie 300, there's an incredible comic book that this man wrote and drew. It's uh -huh. called 300, get well, it. It's companion Xerxes is in the works. Frank, let's, let's check out some of Meltdown. Okay. What got you involved in comic books? My mother tells the story that I was five years old when I told her that I was going to draw comic books for the rest of my life. I grew up reading, uh, you know, reading comic books, and my father was a traveling salesman. When we'd come back from trips to New York City, he'd, he'd bring comic books that, you know, that I couldn't get in the small town I grew up in. So yeah, I just devoured them, and, and I wanted to do them. Did you have those memories of the spinner rack going through that? Absolutely. I've got one in my, in my home. If you don't have a spinner rack, get one. We are now kind of in a golden age of comic books where we've got giant $100 million movies like Wonder Woman coming out sure. and making tons of money. What are your feelings about the Marvel and DC movies? We take them one at a time. You know, the good ones are really good and the bad ones aren't worth mentioning. That's why I'll mention Wonder Woman. That was absolutely terrific. Wasn't it? Are you enjoying the Marvel movies? I enjoyed like The Last Spider-Man a lot. I, I like the kid who played Spider-Man. Tom Holland. And some of the touches, some of the touches were so gentle and clever. The fact that he was shorter than Mary Jane Watson. <laughs> Doesn't that take everybody back to their adolescence? What can you say to the people out who are watching this right now who are aspiring comic book writers yeah. or artists who <clears throat> want to get involved in this industry? Don't. No, uh, if you want to draw comics, the most important thing is to learn to draw. In order to draw a, a a figure well. You have to learn how the muscles and bones work. A lot of a lot of people learn a lot of surface anatomy because they study comic books, but they don't even they don't know which bones go where, and you've got to know that first and foremost. I was taught that very early on in my career, and, and it's been the most valuable lesson I learned. What is it about comic books that are so effective storytelling techniques? I've got to quote somebody who was much wiser than I am, um, which is Will Eisner. He said to me that what made comic books so special wasn't they could do extraordinary, wild, crazy things all over the place. He said it was, it was because, they could, because they were intimate. Now, I half agree with Will about that, because what I also love about comics is they can do ridiculously extraordinary things. But the intimate nature of the form is very important. The fact that you own a comic and you're alone with it is, is, a, is a, a big thing that makes them special. Also, they help you learn to read. Let's go check out some comic books. Absolutely, I want to see this one first. This one looks fun. This is a pal of mine, Dave Crossland. He's an amazing artist. He works yeah. on Cartoon Network's Invader Zim right now. Cool. Okay, let's keep looking. Have you checked out Darwin Cook's Parker adaptations? No. The, the late Darwin Cook, he yeah. did an incredible series run. This is one, really, one of them. This, wow, I didn't know about this. Yeah, it's, I think you will especially love it. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a big Darwin Cook fan. I think you'll definitely get a You're kick a out of it. You're a good salesman. Yeah, good stuff. Right on. You know what's really jumping out at me is this, this one. This. That's nice. Yeah, that's great. Right on. The Arctic Marauder by Jacques Tardy. It's wild. I never saw him draw like this. What got into him? I always want to hear what your own, you know, interests are, and also what's what's new. Cave Carson. Yeah, I was just looking as a cybernetic what? eye. I would really recommend it because it's a, a lot of fun. It feels a little bit like a throwback, but it's actually just really mm -hmm. fun, good storytelling. And this one has, uh, you know, our boy in blue, Superman. Mm -hmm. And you want to take this? And check this yeah, out. Okay, sure. 
got this new take on on the Batman, written by Scott Snyder. It's okay. got uh, John Romita Jr., who just did your Joker yeah, 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 and Robin story. You want to check it out? Nah, it's okay. I'll, I'll, I get those. That's the good thing about being Frank Miller is they actually ship you comic books. Yeah. You know? Frank, it's been a pleasure doing comic shopping with you. Okay. Let's check out those comics at the checkout counter. Okay. Here we go, this is the stack. All right. All right, you guys, that'll bring you to 89.35. Okay. Thank you very much. Absolutely, anytime. Okay. Well, that's our episode of Comic Book Shopping. Thank you so much for being a part of this episode and talking about your amazing career, Frank. It's been Thank a pleasure. Thank you, sir. Let's get out of here. All right. Glad to you.